Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to Escaping or Deflating and Escaping Atheism. I'm Max Colby with the Escaping Atheism Project. We are, as, as Escaping Atheism, we're stuck on the Max Colby channel for now since we got that bogus community guideline strike. No big deal. We'll just keep going on this channel and continue investigating other platforms. Also coming up this week, I want to remind, let everybody know I'll be. I was featured on a podcast called the Safe Spaces Podcast with Anton Hill and his friend Nathan. Uh, that, that where I will be talk, where I talked about Red Pill movie, and uh, did mention my non endorsement, non support, and advice to avoid the Honey Badger Brigade in that interview, uh, amongst other things. And uh, I, I, I hope you'll check it out. I've gotten their permission to mirror it on this channel, so it may appear on this channel. Otherwise, Google up the Safe Spaces podcast with Anton A. Hill and go check that out if you get a chance. Now, uh, in the meantime, otherwise, we're back to a standard episode of Deflating and Escaping Atheism where we take apart a, a YouTube video from a fairly typical atheist. I want to give a shout out to Godless Cranium before we do this. Godless Cranium uh, has at least one video he's done on me. I have to admit that he got me on something. In the heat of battle, I actually said I thought his free speech should be suppressed. Um, I was being sarcastic and rhetorical in reality, and it comes came with a context I didn't think was there. I don't actually think his speech should be suppressed. Um, although I do think generally, given the uh, amount of bullying uh, 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 religious people, Christian or non, have taken uh, from the YouTube atheist community the last 10 plus years, I certainly don't have much sympathy for those who are crying that they're losing their monetization and other channels. Um, yeah. Because I don't think YouTube owes them a platform. And more to the point, the atheist community, which is a community, has done nothing to protect the speech rights, free speech of their critics, and in fact has a 10 year long terrible history of suppressing uh, religious people, uh, especially anybody who ever dares to leave the atheist fold or be critical of it. Um, those are just facts. So we will be getting back to you, Godless Cranium, in some, at some point soon. I think I'll try and talk Rob here into doing a response video to you. Uh, but this week we have the video that Rob wanted to do. Rob, who's this, and 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 what caught your attention about this guy's video? Well, uh, this is a a a kind of upstart, uh, uh, quote unquote, skeptic uh, YouTube channel, uh, and his name is is genetic genetically modified skeptic. Although it's actually a misnomer. I think he should be a genetically cloned skeptic. And like a lot of things, uh, I. I tend to choose things for, for what I believe is their typicality. So, yes, he, he, gives, he gives a little, uh, a, a little spiel here about, about atheism and arrogance, but it, it, it's a pretty standard spiel. I mean, I mean, if you've been around the block as many times as we have, you've probably heard it dozens of times. But this, this guy seems like an acceptably uh, bland uh, uh, kind of uh, vessel for, for this kind of boilerplate of atheism. Well, and he goes by genetically modified skeptic, and uh, okay, well, you want me to just go ahead and start playing his video, and uh, it's only about five minutes. Yeah. So uh, we'll play his video, and you can let me know when you want to stop, okay? Okay. All right, here we go, everybody, the genetically modified skeptic. It seems to be a common experience among atheists to have been called arrogant or prideful by a religious person. I'm an atheist, and I've experienced that myself. But every time I've experienced it, it hasn't been any kind of response to the way that I'm presenting my points, the tone of voice I'm using. It has to do with the points themselves. So is atheism inherently prideful? Consider my points and you tell me. When I left my faith and became an atheist, I went from thinking that the universe was designed with me in mind to realizing that I was just an infinitesimal result of natural order in a totally indifferent universe. At the beginning of the universe, no one planned for or even cared about whether or not I would exist. It wasn't until I was conceived that a couple of people... Okay, okay, okay. Can we cut it off here? Sure. Uh, yeah, well, first off, uh, the first problem is is that, uh, uh, like, arrogance or, or humility or whatever, these are not attributes of beliefs. They are attributes of people. And so and so when you're kind of dealing with, with people, you say, oh, atheists are arrogant. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. 
So uh, based on my experience, it, there's no contest. Atheists are, are the more arrogant. In fact, I think, I think you and I might be, <laughs> might just about be the most uh, arrogant Christians out there. So yeah. But yeah, so, so that's his first error is that he assumes uh, uh, that, that, that arrogance is somehow an attribute of beliefs. Yeah, like yeah. I mean, I, 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 I he he says that he accepts he accepted that uh, I forget his exact phrasing, but basically that it's a random, causeless, meaningless universe, right? Um, <laughs> he came to accept that, and it's like, okay, well, then you accept you made a faith assertion, right? You made a faith leap right there. Yeah, you made a faith leap right there, and you know what? I'll even go as far as to say it's okay that you made that faith leap. It would just be nice if you would uh, recognize in yourself that you made it. Yeah. yeah. It is, in fact, rational and logical to think that there is a guiding intelligence running the universe. It just is. There's all kinds of reasons to think that all by itself. Yeah. And I don't know what you're – you said you left faith. I, which faith? Because <laughs> we still have faith. <laughs> Uh, atheists seem to think there's this belief system called religion, and you either you either believe religion or you abandon religion. It's just you know, yeah. capital religion. Yes. I'm going to give a shout out though that he's less obnoxious by far than a whole lot of atheists to me so far. So um, uh, he's just stating his position. He just seems to lack uh, a real self awareness that he has made a faith leap. Yeah. Um, and it's one that involves several other faith assumptions he can't, you know, back up. Um, but he's, so far anyway, I will just say he's far less shallow and arrogant than so many others I've seen. <laughs> uh, so far anyway. Okay, yeah. anything else you wanted to add there? Uh, uh, no, no, go on a little bit. I, I might have some more to say. Yeah. All right, let's see what we get here. Let's turn this back on about whether I existed or not. If I went outside the Earth's atmosphere and into the vast majority of the universe that was not designed to support human life, then I would die. And only a few of my fellow humans would care. No God, no dead relatives, no cosmic force would care whether or not I existed anymore. Unless we care! <laughs> What's that now? We care. Okay, uh, uh, can I, uh, this kind of goes back, I think, I think you'll probably recognize this from like C.S. Lewis, uh, about, about the argument that, that scale is somehow an indicator of significance. That if we are very puny in, in, the, in the grand cosmic scale, uh, that somehow means we're insignificant. And this is, this is a pretty kind of common trope among atheists. But there's, there's no reason to assume that. Yeah. It, it it depends on what significance you're talking about. Well, and what I would encourage genetically modified to notice here is that all the other things I noticed tumbling out of his mouth are logical conclusions of the atheism and not much different than what any atheist would have said in the last three, four, five thousand years of recorded history yeah. that we have of atheists commenting on things. Um, these are natural consequences of the faith position that is atheism. You assume there is no life is after death because you say you see no evidence of it. Um, uh, you assume well, well, I mean, we're not even tackling. We're, we're we're just we're just accepting that as a given and say, okay, well, th does that make people arrogant? You know. Well, I think it does make you arrogant if you assert those as fa as, as as fact. Yes. You just made a bunch of assertions based on fact. You're no dead ancestors to see no, or care. Really? Because, see, there's a lot, there's evidence that, that your ancestors are alive <laughs> in heaven in some, some fashion. There really is evidence for that, even scientific evidence. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying you have to accept it or find it convincing that the evidence exists. In fact, the near death experience research, whatever you think of it, especially is is quite overpowering these days there's reason to think you have life after death um so you've made some faith leaps here now maybe you even haven't heard all the evidence or you've looked at it all and dismissed it but fine but then why are you dismissing it mm. that, that would be my question um, yeah so shall we go on 
Uh, well, no, there, there's kind of, there's, I mean, he was talking about how, how the universe is hostile and how if he stepped outside of the Earth's atmosphere into the, into the inky uh, black abyss of space, he, he would die a horrible, horrible death. Uh, again, that does not mean you're insignificant. I, I mean, yes, it means that you're very puny in comparison to the scale of the universe. You know, it means that, yeah, mu maybe much of the universe is not conducive to life. That That's certainly true. It, 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 it depends. You're, he's or just making the assumption that that, that scale uh, somehow is significance. I mean, we're significant in, insofar, even in a completely secular, uh, uh, you know, basis, we're significant insofar as this planet contains sentient self-conscious beings. So I, there, there's apparently, we don't see much evidence of that happening in the universe, so we're significant uh, as far as that goes. So, the thing, yeah. The thing, I would the, point point out, out, the thing I'd like to point out to him, um, I got this from mathematics professor John Lennox of Oxford University. Um, I had this confirmed for me by an astrophysicist who also uses quantum physics all the time. Um, and there's other sources that back it as well. Um, in terms of geometric scale, from the smallest known subatomic particle all the way out to uh, the furthest reaches of, of, of what we could think of as the universe. Yeah, the observable universe. Uh, we, 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 are exact, we, we are pretty much exactly geometrically in the middle of that. Yeah. Um, which uh, is an interesting coincidence, one of many coincidences um, that atheists have to call coincidence, because otherwise that points to the fact that we are significant in the universe somehow. Somehow we're like, like we're right in the middle, and, and the, the, the furthest w w way for us to look down into the small and all the way up to the big, we turn out to be right in the middle of that? Mm. Yeah. But that's evidence of something. Now you can say, well, I, I have other explanations for that evidence, or I think it's just random chance, but it's evidence of something. Yeah, I, I, and who knows, maybe the, the scale of the universe is necessary to keep us at a certain level of entropy or keep the universe from collapsing back in on itself or something. I mean, well, it, I even be in itself, it doesn't prove a whole lot, you know. I would ask him, you know, if he's, if he, if he's even never heard that before, I'd also ask him if he's aware of some of the other evidence we have in science, um, yeah. the Big Bang itself. But in any case, what I see is assertion after assertion he can't prove, he just believes because he's an atheist. Yes, yes, yes. Um, things that almost nothing, no one but an atheist would believe, by the way. <laughs> Should we continue? Well, well, I, there's... I was thinking of this uh, earlier today. There's a whole piece of folk wisdom I, I always, I, I always liked, and it was like, like being. He's trying to say that. Well, yeah, l let it play. Let it play. Let it play. All right, let's 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 have him play some more. I don't think that my life has any kind of ultimate purpose, and that's okay. I just make my own meaning out of my own subjective feelings, my own subjective thoughts and desires. The universe wait, is- Wait, 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 okay, okay, there's, there's- Right now. Go ahead. Okay, so, so he says he's not arrogant by dint of the fact that atheism uh, uh, is not an arrogant belief system, even though a, you know, a belief system can't have uh, attributes like arrogance or humility or whatever. But, he said, "Okay, well, we're we're very small. This is the this is the realization of atheism, and we're very inconsequential in in the big uh, physical scheme of things. Therefore, that that's a a non arrogant, that's a humble belief. But we see here that eliminated God from his worldview. He has assumed the role of God. He he is he is determining. He, he is he being the arbiter of all meaning and all all value." Is that not the slightest bit arrogant that you can determine what meaning and value are in the universe? Well, to quote my friend Christopher Lansdowne, um, and he's right about this, and I did used to be an atheist, by the way, uh, genetically modified, just so you know. Um, uh, nope, and now I forgot what my point I was going to make on that. Lansdowne. <laughs> oh, yeah, he says the problem with this. Eat coffee, man. Drink some coffee. <laughs> yeah, the problem with assigning your own meaning to life is that it ceases to exist the minute you cease believing in it. Yeah. 
Um, and I've had that experience, by the way, of believing in something or believing in people or believing in a cause or believing in just about anything. And uh, uh, it can be smashed the minute you stop believing in it or believing yeah. in the person or, or whatever it is. Um, I think you'll find as you get older and corrode throughout life that that gets more and more and more true. Mm -hmm. It really is. Uh, it was, um, you know, when you when you have your faith shattered in multiple things or people, the more often that happens to you as you get older and you meet and lose friends and uh, or join this or that cause or whatever, disillusion comes in hard because basically life sucks and people suck. <laughs> and so uh, in, in all likelihood, unless you're wildly successful in life, and even if you are wildly successful, you're probably going to start finding that that assigning your own meaning stuff is a lot harder than you think it is, and it's a lot harder to sustain. Yeah. Um, and there is a certain arrogance to it. Um, you presume that the most important meaning in life is whatever you assign. Really? I mean, what? how does that affect other people around you? And yeah. who's the, are there any ultimate rules about that either? These aren't sarcastic questions, actually. They're worth thinking about. Um, I'm not even being snotty. I'm just like, really? How does your decision that you will determine what is ultimately right and wrong, ultimately what is, you know, what is, what is the meaning of your existence, you'll determine that on your own, huh? Yeah. And then how, how much weight do you give the opinions of others and when? And which ones? <laughs> it's it, there. You know, it's not that easy as, as you're making it out to be. And I think as as you get older, the contradictions of that will probably seem more clear to you. Yeah. So, all right. Shall we continue? Yep. And if I died right now, or even never existed, the universe wouldn't be that different. It would go on without me. I don't claim to know ultimate truth. I was a believer for most of my life, and I thought that I knew all the answers to the universe. I don't claim to know that now. All I know is what I can perceive and reason through as a flawed human being. What weird fucking religion was he in <laughs> that he thought he had all the answers in life? Some kind of that's that's a, that's another that's another kind of uh, a atheist canard. Is that religious people? Uh, uh, they have one book they think it gives it all the answers. I've never, I've never heard a religious, a person of any religion say that they have all the answers. I, I'm going to guess we've got either an ex, uh, a former hard-ass Mormon, or a former hard-ass fundamentalist Christian of some sort. Um, I have I, rarely I don't, I don't think he was ever a hard-ass anything as far as his his kind of uh, uh, presumptive religious life. I, th I think he was he was a, a nominal whatever he was. And then he I've, discovered atheism on, on the interwebs. I've met Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, and, and just what you might call your Bible thumper fundamentalists, who do, especially the Bible thumper fundamentalists, to be honest, who have a Bible in their hand and can find a handy verse for anything at any time at any moment. Um, I, I have met such 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 people. Yeah, um, they're incredibly annoying, and they're. I, I I could see how you might even be a little scarred grow if you grew up around that constantly, because um, I'm familiar with that strain of Christianity. You've got these know-it-all guys who aren't really that bright or even always that honest, who just have these verses memorized and they'll fling them at you, and they seem to have one for every circumstance. Um, uh, that's actually a rare breed of Christian, and not particularly different from many breeds of atheists I've come across. Have you ever met an objectivist, for example? <laughs> Just yeah. saying. Ayn Rand freaks also. Oh, my God. Some of those guys, uh, they've got an answer for everything. Yeah. Um, it's amazing out of their weird Ayn Rand atheist philosophy. Well, anyway. Yeah. Even the most uh, dogmatic Bible thumper Christian would not uh, uh, would not want to see the Bible as as like a bicycle repair manual. They're not going to look for those kind of answers in it, you know. And uh, what's funny is that this, oh well, Christians have one book. They think it gives it all the answers. I'm more open to things. No, well, the thing is, the irony is that atheists have already uh, uh, presumed that the kinds of questions. Uh, a religion provides the answers for they they already assume that those questions are unimportant so it's not it's not like they're looking for different answers to the same question they've just determined they've just predetermined that a certain set of questions are not important 
So the the whole thing is a red herring, really. Well, and it also sounds like a, he either comes from or is generalizing about what I would call a non-scholarly, uh, you know, religious tradition. I mean, if you go into uh, various types of Orthodox Christianity or even other religions like Orthodox Judaism, um, you'll find it's more than just whipping out the text and finding your instant answer there, that there's whole mm -hmm. systems of thought that come out of people who've studied that and are well steeped in the history and the philosophy and the theology. Um, uh, so, you know, whole ethical systems. Like I would give you one example, just one Thomistic natural, natural law. It's very strong, actually. It's a very strong ethical and scientific framework, to be honest. Mm. Um, T-H-O-M-I-S-T. It's a reference to Thomas Aquinas. Thomist natural law. Um, it's a system of both ethics and scientific inquiry. You could use it for both. Um, and that's just one example. There's other systems of thought. Essentially, if you look into a lot of these things, you'll find that there's, a, there's atheist systems of thought and there are theist systems of thought. And uh, some of the theist systems of thought are a lot more sophisticated than you seem to be aware, sir. Mm. Just mentioning. To, but, but hey, Max, if, if any religion was true, we we everyone would agree with it, right? Isn't that the way it works? That's yeah. what atheists tell me. <laughs> there would be no disagreement because, no, because something can't be true without everyone agreeing on it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> well, should we keep going? Sure. All right. Here we go. We're only a minute and a half in, and we're going to get all through five all through five minutes. Hey. Guess. Let's see. Whoopsie. Hang on a second. And my arguments are just my best attempt at doing that. I mean, I could be wrong, and I'm totally open to changing my mind if evidence demands it. I'm not claiming some kind of superior knowledge through divine revelation. That's another thing, divine revelation. I don't claim that the creator of the universe, the wisest and most powerful being to have ever existed, speaks to me specifically. No supernatural entity has ever whispered in my ear and given me divine truth. I don't think that any of my ideas were hand delivered to me by some kind of supernatural force and are therefore superior to other people's. All my ideas. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, more gross generalizations. Yeah. Which, which, which religion did you grow up in and where? I mean, holy cow. I mean, I grew up around Presbyterians who wouldn't put up with that sort of thing you're talking about or that sort of yeah. attitude. Well, first off, let, let's just get this out of the way. Uh, you say that you're you're open to all evidence and you're willing to change your mind upon discovering new evidence. Uh, uh, Max and I uh, are dubious about that claim that uh, that most atheists are, are just willing to change their beliefs on new evidence. Uh, we don't see that in practice. We know it's something atheists like to say, but we, we don't see any evidence of it uh, in practice. So that's that. And then, and then he goes on, well, he doesn't, he doesn't believe that God ever whispers in his ear. Okay, well, e even, even granting all the premises there, that's still uh, the person who does believe that God whispers in there. That, that's still not arrogance. Yeah, like anybody who disagrees with you actually has God talking in their ear or thinks that. On the flip side, if somebody does think they've heard God speak to them, are they automatically wrong, sir? Yeah. Also, is there any possibility you ever heard God speak to you and you decided to ignore it because you weren't thinking about it properly and didn't clearly hear what you were supposed to hear? Is that possible? You know, people who talk, who serious, intelligent, learned people who talk about God um, uh, and pray regularly, rarely do we, and, and who think we have had conscious contact with God, Rarely do we describe it as some man whispering in our ear and telling us our ideas are right. It's yeah. I don't even almost don't want to say more, uh, just to say that that's a pretty flip way of describing some people's experiences of contact with the divine. Very flip. Um, and I just don't know anybody who walks around claiming, except weird, rabid fundamentalists, that because you know they you know they they who claim they speak for God. And I think you'll even find that in most of the Christian community, that if you claim you speak for God, um, people will look at you suspiciously and wonder what's wrong with you or if there's something wrong with you. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very serious thing when you've got someone who's talking that way. 
Uh, Christians have always recognized this, which is why even now, if you're a person who has religious visions in a responsible church, certainly in mine, um, the first thing the priest will do is ask you to keep that to yourself and come in for some counseling and to talk. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and we'll give you guidance to make sure you're not turning into some crazy person. Yeah. Um, you know, so, yeah, I don't know what these generalizations are about. Which denomination was that you were in again? I'm just curious. <laughs> he was in religion. Yeah, something he calls religion. Should we keep going? Okay. All right. Got to start sharing again. I didn't see that, by the way. You have to handle the human brain and could be proven wrong by one little contradictory fact at any time. Likewise, I don't think I can whisper in the ear of some kind of supernatural being and have them intercede on my behalf. Shut the up. only way that I can achieve anything is through my own actions that just exist in the natural world alone. I admit that it doesn't matter how hard I believe in something. There's no supernatural force that will ever move mountains or heal the sick or raise the dead just because I ask it to. My influence on the universe stops in the natural world, and I don't think I have the ability to directly or indirectly magically change the world through my thoughts. If I want something done, I have to do it myself because I realize that I don't have... Okay, that was just a long... I'm sorry? That was just a long clusterfuck of I don't know where to even start. That was almost a gish gallop. <laughs> I really like Dwayne Gish, the creation is just point after point after point. I want to stop him on every one and says, what? Who thinks these things? Yeah, yeah. 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 Who thinks these things? And well, how is your understanding of religion that you, I mean, we all know there's crazy psycho fundamentalists who want of any stripe who, you know, who thinks these things? I want to know who. I, but I, I want to talk about his atheism, though. Because because he he's kind of advocating okay well if I want something I'm gonna have to do it myself you know I I'm self this is what I call a, a knucklehead a, a self empowerment atheism and, and it, it ends up being so vacuous well he says I'm going to have to do it myself well in the in the purely kind of naturalistic you're not really doing anything you're you're just one link in a chain I mean you don't really have any will you don't really have any influence. You know, you're just this uh, epiphenomenon in the entire universe, you know? So, no, he, he, the whole, the whole self-determination thing just kind of falls flat because, because in, in a completely causal, naturalistic universe, uh, your, will, your will is not small but significant. Your will is just completely uh, non-existent. Uh, yeah, and, and again, what's going to happen to you is, is that uh, just if you go into the whole... Uh, nothing but random, causeless universe and survival of the fittest and what, what all that. You're probably going to find over time that you are in you, in your life. You are under the control of forces you have no control over whatsoever. Even in your atheist, materialist, scientismic, naturalist uh, worldview, there will be forces you absolutely cannot control, dictating your fate. I don't even just mean things involving your physical health, but your economic status and, and, and all that other stuff will be subject to forces you can't control. In fact, you believe you are subject to forces that you can't control. Things like the laws of physics, you believe in yes. those, um, and you, you have no control. Of them. That, means, that means he's humble. I guess it means he's humble, yeah. Um, and this, this caricature idea that you have of spiritual people, I, I'll even talk about Hindus here or Shintoists. Nobody thinks it's that the, the, the spirit forces are magic genies you rub to get wishes. Yeah. I, 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 you know, God controls the laws of physics and probability. That's something we've believed for thousands of years. I don't just mean Christians either. Mm -hmm. um, if you think you're subject to the laws of physics and probability, then you're subject to forces you can't control um, that are dictating your fate. The real question I would have for you, sir, is why do you prefer a view that these random forces are causeless and unintelligent? Why would you not think that things like probability and physics are ultimately driven by something intelligent that matters? Um, that's another that, that's a fair question and your atheistic assumption that nothing controls them that they're just mindless and do that because they do 
again, is a is a question that's actually you ought to be asked. That's that's uh, kind of uh, an ultimate irony of, of modern atheism is that is that their entire project is simply that of subtracting of of subtracting intelligence from the universe. They subtract intelligence as as the prime mover, as the first cause of the universe. They subtract intelligence of human beings uh, in the kind of purely naturalistic, uh, eliminativist materialism uh, thing that, that some atheists add. That's actually almost kind of the logical consequence of naturalism is the eliminativist uh, materialism, so, which is very difficult to say, by the way. So yeah, it, it seems like at every step they are subtracting intelligence from the universe, and yet they call theirs the intelligent, rational worldview. That's, that seems uh, highly ironic to me. Shall we continue? Sure. All right, let's go. Have any connection to a supernatural force that will allow me to change things with my mind. I don't have faith in anything. I admit that all of my beliefs have to be justified by evidence. And oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> it, 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 it's like you're bragging. You're making a completely unwarranted brag, and you're expecting us to believe you. No, we don't believe that your beliefs are based on evidence. We have strong reason to believe that your beliefs aren't based on evidence. Well, he said quite a few faith-based things that he has no actual evidence for and yeah. that are contrary to existing evidence. Um, <laughs> it should be interesting to see him try and defend any of them. One of the <laughs> things... Huh? Go ahead. No, it's, it's just like to say, I, I base my beliefs on evidence. I don't believe... All it would take is one piece of evidence. I, expecting us to be impressed by that, I mean, all we have to do, all any Christian has to do is just say, I, I don't believe you, you know? I don't, I don't see this behavior uh, in action. I know that's what you want me to believe. Uh, I, I don't, I, the proof is not in the pudding, you know. Yeah. You know what, I'm going to have fun taking apart Godless Cranium. I hope we can do him next week. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll repeat that I didn't literally mean his free speech should be suppressed, but in any case. The, the, the names, the names just keep getting more and more ridiculous. Godless cranium. It's, 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 it's. There's no god in that cranium. It's, it's a value subtracted cranium. Yeah. Oh, I saw the. You know, I, I don't have the link, or I'd throw it up. I saw something funny, which was a skeptic name generator. So yes. The, the skeptic, the, the next hot skeptic. Here, here's the random buzzwords to use. Um. I, I like all, all of the names and all of the uh, all of the little avatars. It, it's always like logic or essence of thought, and it has like the brain with the beams of light shooting out of the brain. It's like, whoa, you guys must be super geniuses. You have you have fucking brains as your avatars. Wow, I'm impressed. They have they, they like brains and they like astronomy shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah because that's science. That's science. Good science. Yeah. Oh God, I read real. <laughs> All right, shall we keep going? Yes. Push through. Let's go. Then they're not worth holding. I don't think that my ideas are so superior and obviously true that I don't have to give good reasons for why I accept them. They're not just true, and it's not that if someone disagrees for any reason that they're actually wrong. They could be right as a Christian. Okay, okay. So, so. Uh, uh, okay. Sorry, what now? So he may be wrong. He admitted that. So his beliefs are, 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 are changeable due to evidence. So will you say that you may be wrong and that there may be excellent evidence for the existence of God and that perhaps some of the Christians you have kind of been trained to mock might know things you don't know? Perhaps there are, there are Christians whose understanding and knowledge is superior to your own. Uh, are you willing to admit, to admit that you may be wrong about that? Hell, I'll, I'll, I will even do the annoying thing I keep doing and say again, are there any Hindus you've talked to about this? Yeah. Are there any Shintoists you've talked to about this? Are there any non-atheist spiritual Buddhists you've talked to about things like this? Really, how have you just talked to theistic philosophers generally? How broad has your scope of inquiry actually been? Well, <laughs> I... I I, I think this kid. I think this kid is in like Texas or Oklahoma or something. So I, I, I don't talk, don't think he's talked to any uh, Hindus or Shintoists. If he, if he weren't so, you know, if he weren't spouting so many of the talking points, I might be going like, man, if you're just confused, come here, I'll show you some smarter, smarter yeah. Christians. But I'm like, I'm not sure he's looked at all. He may be in some part of the country where there's nobody who's real trained on this. 
I would point something out that I think everybody should hear, which is that most humans have a natural understanding of God. We know this from science. God, in at least the generic sense of something is guiding things, something's behind everything. Um, this is a natural, normal sense. Children develop, most children, except for some autistics and a few others. The uh, uh, it, so it's normal to have that sense. It's it's biologically normal to have that sense. I often ask, and therefore, what is the, your justification for telling people to deny it? And yeah, wait. Um, I forget what point I was trying to make by bringing that up. Um, Except, oh, there's a lot of religious people who can't articulate their religious beliefs very well. Yes. There's a lot of them. That doesn't mean they're wrong either. No, it really doesn't mean they're wrong. It may just be you haven't sat down with the person who is at least as smart as you and has heard through a lot of your questions and, and, and assertions and all that because you're not saying anything we haven't heard. Yeah. Um, uh, and so... There you go. Um, if I, he seems to be awfully sure for for a person who claims to be completely humble in what in what he knows. He seems to be awfully sure about what religious people know or don't know, or what their thought processes are. That's right. That's right. Or even to know that religious people have often gotten direct inspiration from their religion for their, yeah. work. including, so, by the way, that the, Georges Lemaitre, the father of the Big Bang Theory. Yeah. Um, who was directly inspired by the Book of Genesis. By yeah, way. you you know it, it's kind of funny. Uh, uh, like uh, uh, Newton, when when he made his uh, his uh, inverse square theory of gravitation, there was really no empirical evidence to go on. But he was kind of guided by the notion that God would make the world intelligible to reason. That God would make the world follow these these kind of fixed uh, laws that could be mathematically described. And why do they keep so, going that way? Why do they keep going that way? Why don't they stop? Why don't they change randomly? Why not? Yeah. yeah. We so, think so, intelligence key is is why not, but what's your explanation? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it took it took I, I think probably like like a century or two for the uh, inverse square theory of gravitation to be uh, uh, experimentally confirmed. Yeah. So yeah, uh, uh, religion and faith. Are not necessarily your bugbears, yeah. Yeah, no kidding. All right, should we keep going? Yep. As a Christian, I can't prove it to you. The Bible is the Word of God. I admit that that's where I start from. And the Bible says if you come to God believing that He is, He'll reveal Himself to you, and you will know. As Christians, we can say we know. No one's ever going to convince me that uh, that the Word of God is not true. One of the most fundamental. Okay, okay, okay. I kind of stop there because I said Ken Ham, I think. It might be, and I, I, I sense some selective editing there, but that could, whoever that guy is, even if that's really getting his position there, I think we just described that guy. He <laughs> has a natural sense of God, and then maybe they have a spiritual encounter. Yeah. And, and it changes them, and that's as far as they can go in their explanations. Yeah. He's also obviously some kind of sola scriptura, fundamentalist type Christian. Um, which makes him a, a minority among Christians, just so you know. Um, and that's not a very good or articulate uh, set of things he just said there. I'm sorry, I could give you, I can give you a, a, more than a dozen reasons why I believe in God before I even touch a Bible. Yeah. And uh, in fact, I could probably give you a thirty. <laughs> um, if you and I wouldn't even count count the personal encounter part of it, which uh, because. You would just dismiss that as mental illness anyway. Of course. Um, um, but I'm just talking about the evidence besides the personal experience and the experience of others I find were reliable. And you have no basis for dismissing somebody else's, uh, uh, you know, spiritual uh, apprehensions, you know. Well, there's the thing. Okay, so that guy he just quoted is not articulate at all. I'm pretty sure it's um, I think it is, who's a real embarrassment to most Christians. That but I this know. guy is him as representative of all Christians, naturally. Ken Ham is totally non-representative. It's, it's ludicrous who he is. If that's Ken Ham, I can't remember. He, I think he is atheist's favorite um, because he's so shallow. Besides I mean, the Westboro Chip Baptist Church. Yeah, yeah, I mean, what has happened? Where are the where are the smart religious people? They used to be common in public life. Now all we get is Sam Harris and Ken Ham. It's ludicrous. Um, and by the way, Ken ha uh, Sam Harris, oh my God, what an idiot. <laughs> um, 
a disingenuous man for sure, a charlatan. Um, but in any case, uh, no, really. Um, Say with me, I will talk to you for an hour without touching a Bible as to why I believe there's a God and why I believe there's an afterlife. If you want to then get into uh, the Bible and why I, how I read it, how I approach it, and why I think it's, it's, it's accurate, that's another conversation. If you want to even admit to the possibility of the supernatural, why would you read the Bible? Yeah. I'd not be impressed with it anyway. You just, I don't know why you'd read it. You think there's nothing supernatural and this is all a bunch of garbage. Well, it's... Okay, it all depends on your point of view, and the atheistic worldview does change how you see everything. I hope you've acknowledged that much at least. Once you're atheist, it changes everything about how you see the world. And that is that is an enormous presumption on his part too to say that he knows uh, nothing supernatural can happen. So he again, again he's exceeding the limits of of his of his professed humility here. All right, so I'm going to give this to him as a challenge, him and his listeners. He's saying nothing supernatural exists. I'll define supernatural for you unless you've got a better one. Supernatural will be anything that operates uh, that is beyond the control of the laws of physics or beyond the, you know, does not operate by the laws of physics as we know them. Okay? That would be something supernatural because it's not in nature. By that definition, I assert to you that logic is supernatural, mathematics is supernatural, ideas are supernatural and free will are, is supernatural. That's what I think. Now, uh, using that definition of supernatural, is what I just said not rational? It's just the question. You, you, you can't deny it without affirming it, yeah. Yeah, I want to know, is it rational to think that forces work outside the laws of physics? Um, that would be something supernatural. And I just gave you some examples of things you believe in that you can't scientifically prove, by the way. You can't scientifically prove logic. You can't scientifically prove math. But you can sort of, a little bit, but you can't really prove math. Ideas, free will, will at all. Actually, you can't explain will. Well, that, that's another thing. He might not believe in free will. so he's doing Most that. atheists do not believe in free will. It's a very predictable atheist personality trait. Most of them do not believe in free will. It kind of comes with the atheism. Yes. Those who do believe in it usually try to find something in the laws of probability and chance or something like that. Uh, but, yeah, I, I want to know, do you believe in free will? Just I like, <laughs> there, there's a, a meme graphic, I, I think, like a religion of reason or something. No, no it's like atheism on the slide or something shared it. And it's like this cartoon of like a big kind of angry, repulsive guy. <laughs> he says, <laughs> I, 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 I'm a big bag of chemicals with, a, with an angry opinion, and you must listen to the uh, angry opinion of this uh, big bag of chemicals, yes. Yeah. All right, shall we go on? Yes. Here we go. Let's see if we can get this finished. He's got almost two minutes to go. How far we can get. Parts of my worldview is that people should have good reasons for accepting everything that they do. That means that if someone came along with good evidence that didn't support one of my viewpoints, I would drop that viewpoint. I would change it to make it suit the evidence. I'm really willing to say that I'm wrong on a dime and change my beliefs if the evidence demands that. I'll admit that I don't know. You don't believe you. I really don't know. I won't get defensive about it. And. Okay, you won't admit the things you don't know. Uh, okay, you won't get defensive of the things you don't know. Great. Is there a, a life after death, sir? Just curious. If your answer is you don't know, okay. Yeah. But I think earlier you suggested there wasn't any. So yeah. do you actually, you know, you say you don't know. Okay, well, you don't believe in the supernatural or do you just not know if you believe in the supernatural yes do you is, 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 it, is it possible I, and I, I always love this I, I think I think more people should use it to say do you uh, grant that it is possible that that belief in God is rational and you are in error if you're if you're that open to uh, to new ideas are you open to the possibility that that theism is rational and you're simply mistaken that yeah. there is good evidence for, for theism. That's right. I mean, I'll even repeat it to you. And by the way, this is how, how conversations like this have gone for thousands of years. This is nothing new. Um, a lot of people have trouble with the idea of God. I had trouble with the idea of God. And some of the questions we're asking get people back to the idea of God and get them to understand that it's a rational idea, at least. 
Hmm. Um, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to become a Christian or join a particular religion. religion. Although once you realize it's rational to think there's a God, because it is rational to think about the God, uh, think there's a God, then the question, questions like, was Muhammad who he said he was? Was Jesus who he said he was? Yeah. Those become much more interesting questions. When you've already laid out, you know, eliminated the possibility of a God in the first place, what else could you say about people like the Buddha or Muhammad or Maimonides or any of them, except that, I don't know, they were mythologists and nuts? Yeah. Uh, you know. I mean, you, you have to accept, you have to uh, take them on a case-by-case -case basis. You can't just assume, as many atheists do, that just, just because people believe things about God, uh, all, all beliefs have an, equally, uh, have an equal possibility of being correct. You know? Let's finish so that's, that's an assumption out. you're bringing. Let's finish this video out, okay? I won't try to use my own ignorance of a topic to try to prove that my worldview is actually true. I have no problem with fessing up to my own ignorance. Tide goes in, tide goes out. Never miss. Okay, 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 okay. Can't explain. So, so he's saying uh, uh, religious people uh, use their ignorance uh, as an argument. Uh, that is arrogant. Yes, it you're, is. I'm afraid you're making an arrogant claim there. Yes. Yeah. Which religious people? And by the way, how many atheists do you know who do this? Because I know a lot. In fact, yeah. I'll mention a few names you may have heard of. Penn Jillett, uh, Sam Harris, Bill Maher, yeah, yeah, uh, just saying, just saying. Yeah. Uh, keep going? No, no, no. <laughs> uh, uh, using ignorance as an argument, okay. Uh, whenever an atheist says, there is no evidence for God, I'm going to put that in quotation marks. Whenever an atheist says that, ask, how do you know that to be true? And they'll, they'll say, well, I don't know, you convince me. That they, they throw it back on you. Well, they don't see any evidence for God. Therefore, they are they are completely justified in saying there is no evidence for God. Isn't that using your ignorance as an argument? It is, isn't it? If you say there is no evidence because you haven't seen evidence that convinced you, yeah, you're arrogant on multiple levels. It assumes you've seen all available evidence, and that you have a godlike understanding of, of of everything relevant to the issue. Yes. That's correct, um, and everything says to me that you haven't thoroughly investigated the evidence. You've just made some assumptions. Yeah. Uh, prove me wrong. Um, here's another little challenge for him or his audience. Please clearly and correctly state the argument from motion and explain why it is wrong. Please <laughs> clearly uh, state the argument from intelligibility and why you think uh, it is wrong to suggest that an intelligible universe requires a guiding intelligence to make it so. Yes. Um, you know, please explain, you know, why you dismiss the evidence from near-death experience uh, and, and what your evidence is that it is all just psychological effect. And, you know, but there's so many things I, I want to know, but there's three. There's three. So is, can you master those? understand why people would call them evidence and why you would say they're not evidence. Because I don't think you can actually say they're not evidence. You can just say you don't find them convincing, maybe. But I'd be curious if you can do it. Yeah. All right, shall we move on? I'm kind of curious. I, I just made a connection here. I'm just, I'm just speculating, obviously. But uh, he has all, all the like, superhero posters on his wall. And the kind of a, a, a strange kind of confluence of interest that's pretty common. I, w I wonder if atheists just think that God is supposed to be another superhero. Maybe maybe that's their stumbling block. They, they can't even understand first cause arguments because they have this notion that God is just, just a super being with superpowers. I also hate call it, call it, calling it a first cause argument because I think that's almost the autistic, aspy way of narrowing the question of where it all came from in the first place rather than why it's all still here now. Okay, yeah. Why it's all still growing. I, I do that because I noticed, I just noticed that it's a subtle thing in the language. There's so many people who think, you know, origins, that it's all about how it all began in the beginning. Yeah. So, no, a really sophisticated theistic worldview is also about what's going on right now. Yeah. Well, when God created the universe at the first moment. He also creates the universe at every moment. But, but for technical reasons I'm not going to go into, I, I don't feel it's necessary to dispel first cause. Oh, I know that. Although I'll also say, yeah, what you just says, said is completely uh, consonant with the digital physics theory of the universe. 
um, which is that things are being created constantly. Oh, it, it's 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 funny what you guys think you know, and then we poke you, and you don't want to hear it. Yeah. Um, I predict he's either going to want a long conversation with us, or he's going to backpedal furiously and have to start saying why all these things aren't evidence. Uh, anyway, shall we go on? Sure. Really want to get through this guy. I realize that the only way I'll ever be able to learn anything Great, is by being willing to admit that I don't know something in the first place. I don't think that atheists or theists really know whether or not God exists. But as an atheist, I'm not actually making a claim there. So let's sum up. Huh. Most religious people think that the universe was created with them in mind. They think their life has an ultimate God-given purpose. They think they know the ultimate truth of the universe. They think they've received some kind of divine revelation in their life. They think they have access to a supernatural being that will intercede on their behalf when they ask. They claim they can know something is true without having to present reasons for it. Oh, shut the- Okay, 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 okay. Shut the fuck up. He has said so much bullshit. Oh, my God. Some of that's that, arrogant. What you just said was arrogant, okay? Beyond arrogant. I mean, it was just actually downright offensively stupid. Yes. I, you don't have to care that I'm offended, but really, speak for your own damn self. Yes. And by the way, you fucking liar, you got a whole bunch of assertions you've made you can't back up here. Yeah. Well, you know what he'll say? I'm an atheist. I don't have to prove anything. I'm not making a claim while well, he makes a dozen claims, yes. Yeah, you make, you've made claim after claim after claim after claim after claim after claim after claim so far. Yes. Um, and and then grossly generalized other people about issues you clearly do not understand. Yes. You've described, well, you, he's correct that, 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 that we think we have purpose. Okay, great. And things like that. But no, no, all this stuff about thinking we've got a divine, you know, fairy whispering instructions in our ears and that we're automatically right from on high because we have that. Well, well, well in, that, fairness, in fairness, Christians uh, uh, who do believe in the uh, inspiredness of, of the Bible do believe that there's a revelation, you know. Amongst other things, yeah. yeah. Um, the uh, the uh, Literally, you are arrogant beyond belief, young man. Yes, you are. Prideful? I don't know. Are you proud to be ignorant and arrogant at the same time? Because you're profoundly ignorant. By the mm -hmm. way, I'm not even insulting you. I'm just noting that you're profoundly ignorant. Uh, yes. that, or you're profoundly dishonest. Have you actually spoken to anybody who's thought through these issues? <laughs> Well, I, I mean, everything on his channel is just a uh, skeptic channel 101. So, so I, I, I think he's just basically he has a very superficial understanding, and he's simply parroting what he's heard other skeptics say. The market in skepticism is dying, and this is why. What you, to be honest, most of what you're saying here is kind of silly. Yeah. Um, I, you know, in the beginning, you didn't turn out to get too bad, but really, with this gallop of ridiculous, ludicrous generalizations about religious people bragging that I'm not X, Y, and Z like those stupid, thuggish religious <laughs> people. Yeah, oh my goodness, yes. You By the way, while, while we're on that subject, uh, if, if you're mocking uh, the faith of Augustine and Aquinas and Newton and Dostoevsky and all those people, and, and you take their, their most cherished beliefs and you, oh, those are all a bunch of silly fairy tales, I'm so much smarter than those people, is that not in itself just a teensy bit arrogant no lie. You know, those who in, in, in past generations, if you want to read a smart, smart atheist, read either Nietzsche or at least some Sartre. Yeah. I'm tempted to give you David Hume, but I, I'm pretty sure David Hume literally drives people mad to read him. Uh -huh. uh, Nietzsche went mad because he went, took theological conclusions of his atheism seriously, and it did yeah. certainly drive him mad. Um, because the logical conclusions of atheism are are so self contradictory and so miserable, it's 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 ludicrous. Yeah, and they're all a bunch of assumptions, assumptions you can't prove, uh, and assumptions that there is reason are reasons to doubt. I, I really think that if you're intellectually honest and you've thought this through, uh, uh, genetically modified, you might be right now going, okay, maybe I'm more agnostic than I thought. 
just maybe, at least if yeah. you're curious. And you know what? There would be no shame in that. It might even open up you up to a new audience. Mm. I'm going to send that observation to somebody like some of the bigger YouTube atheists who are facing demonetization and deplatforming. You know, there really are ways to get along with religious people, even if you don't turn religious. They're really. Uh, yeah. Uh, look at what, look at what Stephen Molly New is doing these days. Yeah. Oh, I know, and look how he's expanding his audience by doing it. He's still an yeah. atheist, although I think he's obviously wavering. Yeah, um, he's a crisis of faith, yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure, but he was the smart one who said, I want to bring the religious voices in and actually talk to them. Yeah. Not about them, but to them and with them. Sargon of the Cod and the, the Honey Badger Brigade could probably both say, all save their skins along with Shu and Armored Skeptic and some of those other people. I think it's too late for TJ Kirk and those nasty, his, his, his crew, crew, but it really is hard. It really is easy to stop being a douche to religious people. Hmm. And, and it really easy to, it is easy to make friends with them without joining their religion. It's astonishingly easy. Yes, even if you're gay, even if you're whatever it's not that hard uh first off you might want to just start with not thinking you're the smartest brain in the room because you're an atheist <laughs> just a style chip should we finish this out yeah but but jump back jump back like three seconds because he, he throws it out so fast here yeah okay for it they think they shouldn't be willing to change their mind if they're presented with new information and they think that their own ignorance on a subject can actually be used as evidence for their position as an atheist i don't think any of that and they say i'm the prideful one thanks for watching i've been drew from genetically modified skeptic if you haven't subscribed to the channel already go ahead and do that and it'll be greatly appreciated you can also follow me on twitter at gm skeptic and until next time stay skeptical it's the humble thing to do okay well we're very skeptical of you and your fans um, yes. And, and so thank you for asking us to stay skeptical. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to say to him from here because I've issued him several challenges. Yeah. Um, and I'd like to see what he does with any of them. Yeah. Uh, um, really, I want to state some of the logical, classical arguments for God and why you feel they can be completely dismissed to arrive at your atheism. Uh, see if you can do that. Look at the scientific stuff I mentioned, too. Just... And, and explain to us what evidence is to you. What will it take you con to convince you of the basic default idea that there is something intelligent running the universe? And what would it take you to, give, to get you to say, oh, yes, there is evidence for life after death after all? We have abundant evidence of both. Mm. Notice I'm invoking no, no divine authority here. I just want to know why you dismiss this evidence and why you would suggest that, or if you would suggest that anybody who decided it was good evidence why you would think they are stupid or wrong just curious um yeah, yeah you're you're prideful son and you're arrogant <laughs> you yes they are you're not mean a lot of your friends are your atheist friends in your atheist skeptic rationalist community are mean and angry you appear not to be you just kind of appear to be uh, blandly arrogant <laughs> <laughs> i like that <laughs> by the way, by the way, neither Rob here nor I are at all arrogant ever. <laughs> not being but humble. That's that's our seal of approval. That is our seal. So while we are saying you're arrogant and prideful, just so you know, we're not. We come across as douches. But if you want to have a conversation, skeptic, uh, genetically modified. Let us know. You don't seem that bad. You just seem unconscious of just how how much you can't get the smell of your own farts. <laughs> uh, all right, Rob, you want to say anything else? Yeah, well, I, I think I think it would behoove us to talk about I would talk about this issue of, of arrogance and, and, and humility. I, I think specifically in terms of the Christian religion, because I, I think I think he's misapprehended this whole thing. Well, like I said, uh, the little piece of folk wisdom I was thinking of earlier today was grocery shopping. If you've ever seen like an internet meme, it says uh, uh, humility is not is not thinking less of yourself; it's thinking of yourself less. And so that's the opposite, in my opinion, of atheists: is that they they think that they are an inconsequential speck in the universe, but they are so obsessively self conscious 
that they occupy the entirety of their thoughts. Now, if you want to talk about arrogance, again, speaking specifically of the Christian religion, I mean, yeah, if you think that God became man and sacrificed himself to repay a debt you could not possibly repay on your own, uh, would that not be a very humbling belief? Rather than something to make you arrogant. In fact, and, and this is something people criticize Christians for, in some cases, fairly. Not in all cases, but in some yeah. cases, fairly. Of, I mean, Christianity is the religion that teaches that people pretty much suck. <laughs> um, it really does. That's what all that stuff about how everybody's a sinner is. Now, you know, you do have these self-righteous types who, who, who just lay on the guilt constantly and point fingers and call everything a sin. Um, uh, they're not getting it and they're not doing it. They're not Christianing right because, you know, the first central Christian revelation is that you are screwed up. <laughs> and you're screwed up. And everybody else is screwed up too. Now, yeah. some people don't like that because they want to think well of themselves or whatever, but a bottom line uh, observation about Christianity is that people suck. They're venal, they're selfish, they're two-faced, they're backstabbing, um, they steal, they lie, they murder, they rape, they, they abuse children, they abuse each other. They, 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 people suck. This is the, the, the devotional of Max. <laughs> the, the, the devotional Max. And, 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 and when you get down to it, it's that idea of grace. Yes. Um, you know, good Lord, even if you didn't think it was real, even if you thought it was in your imagination somehow, all just psychology, why wouldn't you want to be lifted from that sense of impending guilt for everything Yeah, by accepting, well, just like everybody else, I suck? Mm. And that's just a way of looking at it because I don't like preaching at people and trying to force them to come to Jesus or any of that. It's not my style. It's just to point out things to think about. Christianity isn't the religion that tells you you know it all. Not the not the no. Christianity I know. It's the opposite. That life's gonna suck. Um, that you're gonna screw up a lot, and uh, um, this world is is frequently just plain evil. <laughs> so take it from there. I'm sorry. What, well, what do you want to say, Rob? That, that I mean, that's that's kind of the thing. Is that yes, uh, uh, we are in a fallen state. And, 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 and so, yeah, it reminds us, yes, that we, we are of a limited capacity. Uh, we are in a fallen state. It's going to be like this. And the irony is, is that that belief is the strongest bulwark we have against this destructive, against <laughs> utopian visions, and very arrogant utopian visions that ironically end up being far more destructive than any religion. The belief... That, that humans are perfectible, the, the, the belief that we can engineer a system for, for a perfect life, those very arrogant systems of belief have ended up, of course, wreaking all sorts of havoc. And so it, it is the humble belief of Christianity that we kind of, the tragic sense that we must resign ourselves uh, to the fallenness of our lot, that is actually the, the strongest bulwark we have against that. And in my opinion, is, is the best guarantor of, of uh, a healthy society. Yeah. You know, I used to have this hope that we would start seeing dialogue with the atheist community of people who would want to sit there and say, okay, well, how are we going to get along with the religious without pretending that we're their arrogant masters? Yeah. How are we going to actually do that? Uh, the only moderately high profile atheist I know who's done any of that is a guy named C.J. Werleman. Although there are some others, but none yeah. of them are the celebrities. Um, where are uh, you? Was he caught up in, in like a plagiarism scandal or something? Yeah, he was accused of it, and he admitted to it and apologized for it and, and gave what I think is a reasonable uh, – that he just plain screwed up. It was in a book yeah. the script. Um, he also points out correctly that Christopher Hitchens is guilty of worse. <laughs> and that's been proven and is well known in, in, in certain circles of the atheist community, although it's kept hush-hush. Christopher Hitchens has a much bigger plagiarism problem on his hands. Um, and he's not the only one with some acad dodgy academic stuff. But Werleman has always at least been, listen, we can't, we got to stop demonizing religious people. This isn't a good idea. Um, and I think 
there'll, there'll hopefully be a growing chorus of that. Um, but it all starts with the, you know, the less prideful and arrogant view of the atheist who thinks he knows everything and that his view of the world is merely the rational view, unlike those primitive religious people. Yes. Really, really genetically modified skeptic. Please think hard. Listen to yourself. And then ask if the, the generalizations you're making about other people are really appropriate. So it sounds like all you've done is run in some very, I don't know, primitive religious circles and not been real interested in seeking people who are at your level. Yeah. That's what I would say. So, yeah, I'm going to give a, a, a guilty verdict on prideful. How about you? <laughs> oh, are we giving a light, like a uh, Cisco and Ebert rating here? That's right. That's right. We'll, we'll, yes, yes. Prideful. For sure, arrogant, for sure. I don't know which way to... I'm going to talk to you about it any time. All right, why don't we close this out? Good thing. Everybody, feel for, please subscribe to Deflating Atheism. Please subscribe to the Max Colbe channel and the Escaping Atheism channel. Please support our work on Patreon as, as well as uh, on escapingatheism.com. And uh, stay tuned. Uh, God bless, everybody. God bless. Thank you.